Let's do a stress transformation example. And let's say I'm given a state of stress. Uh, I guess you could pick any one of these pictures if you wanted to. But I, yeah, I guess it doesn't matter, right? Mm -hmm. So we're given a state of stress. So this is a state of stress. So this is like, you know how we did combined loading problems? Mm -hmm. And then we, we had to draw the or differential volume element at a point. So this might be the result of that differential volume, okay? okay? And then we wanna find, and we had cut it like maybe straight up and down, but now we would like to find this state of stress at a new angle. And we'll say at theta degrees, at theta equal to, uh, I don't know, about 40 degrees, clockwise okay like that and so here's my state of stress okay so we didn't talk about it yet but like the schematic you might draw the state of stress but really the point of it the big thing to do here is to define a local coordinate system for that element so each differential volume element can have its own coordinate system okay so here state uh, uh, so I'll put, even though it's a schematic, I, you know, it's important to define a coordinate system. And this, it looks like this. And I'm given, and this problem was, it's like 45 megapascals, 30 shear stress here, and a normal stress of, oops, the other way, of 60 megapascals. Okay, and this right here, right here, like this. You're okay if I record, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, all right. And so um, we want to define a coordinate system, okay? So for now, as you get started, you just want to take like positive x to be here horizontal. Yeah. <laughs> and positive y, that was scary. <laughs> Uh, positive y just straight up and down okay, okay? and and just stay, stick it like this until you get used to it mm -hmm. okay and so that's my coordinate system but what's really important is that this plus x is also theta equals zero degrees okay. it's like it's my reference for theta equals zero right. okay and then anything going and then any angles like 40 degrees clockwise would be going this way okay. and go you know any other angle going counterclockwise would be going up upwards right towards one okay okay all right then we want to define stress values so you notice how they're just magnitudes and directions mm -hmm. but we want to label them now like sigma x sigma y tau x y okay. because that's what our transformation equations have here yeah okay so it's important to, for us to be able to label them and so two it would be define or label stresses okay and so here, it, it's not difficult, but this is, you have to f be able to say whether it's a positive stress or a negative stress, okay? So this 45 megapascals mm -hmm. is perpendicular to this side or this surface, yeah. yeah? And therefore, it's a normal stress, Yeah. okay? So it's a normal stress. It's acting in the X direction, okay? And it's a positive normal stress because, well, one, you could say it's pulling on the surfaces and causing tension, mm -hmm. okay? But the other way is that, the one way that will work also is that on this positive X face, it's in the positive X direction. Mm -hmm. So positive X face in the positive X direction. Mm -hmm. And a positive times a positive is a positive, positive number. And so this will be positive 45 megapascals okay now this back arrow here is also a sigma x mm -hmm. and if i use that same reasoning this would be on the negative x face yeah in the negative x direction yeah. and a negative times a negative still positive is it still positive and it's still positive because it's causing tension on the surface right yeah okay all right if i look at the y face mm -hmm. and i see the stress perpendicular to the y face that is my normal stress on the Y. 
it's on the positive y face. Right. And which direction is it going? Uh, down. Down. It's in the negative y direction. Yeah. So it's a positive times a negative. Plus a negative. It's a negative. And another way we could say it's causing compression on the face. Yeah. Right? But it would be negative 60 megapascals. Okay. Now the shear stress. So let's take this right here, this one arrow mm -hmm. on the X face. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is on the positive X face in the positive Y direction. And a positive times a positive, positive. is a positive stress. And so this would be tau XY on the X face in the Y direction is positive 30 megapascals. Okay. And this also works if I chose this top arrow. Yeah. This would be tau yx, but we know that it's the same. Tau yx equals tau xy. And this would be on the positive y face mm -hmm. in the positive x direction, therefore positive. Okay. If I did the back arrow here, it would be on the negative y face mm -hmm. in the negative x direction, mm -hmm. therefore positive shear stress still. Okay. So these are the three stresses I need to define. And, and there we go, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Now... Now that I have those stresses, one, two, three, I want to do the stress transformation, okay? And I think making this drawing first is good to visualize the problem, mm -hmm. okay? So here, initially, this I had established theta equals zero as a horizontal line. So this is theta equals zero degrees. Okay. Then the problem said, can I get theta can I get the new state of stress at theta equals 40? Mm -hmm. Okay. Rotated 40 degrees clockwise. So I'm going to draw from here rotating 40 degrees clockwise is this downward direction. I'll draw this theta or this angle right here is 40 degrees. Okay? This is actually theta equals negative 40 degrees. Right. Because we had said positive was going from x towards y. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's that theta equals and this is the this is the orientation that I'm interested in. So what I'll do is I will draw a square or the differential volume element with respect to this theta equals negative 40. Okay. So I'll have a face that's here perpendicular to that theta equals four, negative 40 line. Mm -hmm. And then I will draw the rest of the square. Oh, that's not a good drawing. Okay. But I like to draw this line first. So this is the line perpendicular to that theta equals negative 40. Yeah. And then the square would have to just kind of be parallel and then perpendicular. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And that that's going to be the state. Okay? okay. So I want the normal stress on this face. I don't know which, I don't know if it's going to be going out, causing tension or compression. I want the normal stress on this face. I also want the shear stress on this face. Okay. Okay. And so, so I, I look at my stress transformation equations and, you know, I said sigma at theta, sigma of theta at negative 40 degrees. Yes. Yeah. So that is at theta equals negative four degrees. So your textbook likes to call this X prime, okay? But that's, we'll talk about that more later, okay. okay? And now I'm just gonna straight up plug and chug this stress transformation equation. Um, this would be, this is, here, I'll write it out one time, sigma X plus sigma Y over two plus sigma X minus sigma Y over two cosine two theta plus dot, dot 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 plus tau xy sine two theta yeah okay and so if i if i want to calculate this the stress at theta equals negative 40 degrees if i want to calculate the stress this would be sigma at theta equals negative 40 degrees and this, so here, I, it's really just a plug and chug. So here now, um, 
I have, I have like, let's see, this will be 45 plus negative 60 divided by 2 plus sigma x, which is 45 minus negative 60 divided by 2 times the cosine of 2 theta, which is negative 80 degrees, mm -hmm. plus dot, 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 plus tau xy, which is 30 times the sine of negative 80 degrees. And then we have to calculate that. Okay. And I don't know what that number will be. We should calculate that number, though. Uh, I can get my calculator. And I got yeah. negative 80 so after the calculations, negative 27.9 megapascals. Okay. okay. So this is a normal stress at this theta equals negative 40 line. Okay. And it's negative. Okay. So now on this, this right here is really this X prime. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the Y, the other, the Y prime direction goes along for the ride. Okay. Okay. I don't like writing it in. Okay. Yeah. But it goes along for the ride. It's it just keep obeying the right hand rule. Okay? okay. So that means on this face, on this is the positive x prime face or the new positive face, mm -hmm. but it's negative, so it's going into. So it'd be twenty seven point nine megapascals going into okay. the board, oops, or into the page. Okay. So that's my normal stress on this face. Then. Now I want to calculate the shear stress on this face. Mm -hmm. So I apply the next equation and the shear stress on this face is this tau theta, oops, oh yeah, I'll use a different color, okay. okay, tau theta of, you know, and that equation that we calculate that we had earlier mm -hmm. is just, here I'll write out the equation one time, it's just this negative sigma x minus sigma y over 2 sine of 2 theta um, plus tau xy cosine of 2 theta. And you, you'll see some similarities, right? There's this like neg, you know, it's anyway, there's some similarities. Yeah. And here, this negative, it'd be negative of 45 minus negative 60 divided by 2 sine of negative 80 degrees yep. plus 30 cosine of negative 80 degrees and this will be tau at theta equals negative 40 degrees okay. and now we want to calculate that number so this is 56.9 yeah so the shear stress is a positive 56.9 megapascals and so that means on the face of the cut this is this positive x prime face yeah. in the positive y prime direction mm -hmm. would be here okay. and that would be 51 or 56.9 mpa yeah mm -hmm. and and because of equilibrium i know the other shear stresses are also the same they're all 56.9. Yeah. Okay. And also because of equilibrium, I know on this side, there's 27.9 MPA okay. also. Okay. So what's left is for me to find the normal stress on this face. Okay. But we're not going to use this equation. We're not going to use that <laughs> equation. But it's, you see how it says is that that Y face is 90 degrees apart. So here, if I'm 90 degrees from here, what is the angle theta that I'm interested in? If you're 90 degrees over there, it uh -huh. would be 50? It'd be 50. Yeah. yeah. This angle right here is 50 degrees. So, so this line is really, this line is really the theta equals 50 degree line. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. And, and so if I put, and so all, you know, really you got, a fancy schmancy calculator right so instead of negative eight you just go scroll back up to this equation right here oh. and just put instead of negative 80 put cosine of 100 degrees oh, okay. and you should get the result you know if you did all everything in one equation right yeah and so here sigma at theta equals 
50 degrees, you know, would be, uh, I think it's still the same term here, 45 plus negative 60 over 2, which is negative 7.5 megapascals, plus um, 45 plus 60 divided by 2, that's 105 divided by 2, so that's 52.5 times cosine of 100 degrees yes. plus 30 times sine of 100 degrees and if we calculate that okay so it was and so our result is tw positive positive 12.9 12.93 yeah 9 megapascals right here so that means on this face which is now when we choose when we use this equation sigma theta equals 50 degrees that's like the new x prime right so i don't like writing that okay, oh, okay. <laughs> and, and so here this is like this new x prime and at 12 it's positive 12.9 so on this face on this positive x prime face in the positive direction it would be 12.9 mpa mm -hmm. like this and then it would be a point like this oh, okay. And that is, that would be my new state of stress at theta equals 40 degrees clockwise. clockwise. Okay. Yeah. And it's just a, a matter of being able to draw it. Mm. Right. Everything else just plug and chug. It's just plug and chug. <laughs> it really is. It really is. Man. Yeah. All right. And then we're going to learn how to do this with more circle, which also is, it's not too bad. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, at least in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, um, all right.